Dr. Greg Goglin, Fair State University. In this video, we are going to take the database design that we have showing here in Visio and actually load the tables in Microsoft SQL Server. So we have already taken this design and defined a database and the tables in SQL Server. So now what our next step is, is to actually load the data. There's several different ways to load the data, including just typing the data into the tables in SQL Server. Uh, one method that people find quite easy to, to do sometimes is to simply create the data in Excel and then import it in Excel. An advantage of doing that is you have a copy of the data and you can use some of the utilities in Excel to create data. Now within Excel, you can see that I have created a series of tabs across the bottom, uh, worksheets, and each worksheet is one of the tables. So I named the course table for the course tab. The degree table is a, also a worksheet tab. And across the top in row one for the columns, course ID, course name, course descript, and professor ID, these are the exact same names as the tables within SQL Server and also in Visio. The advantage of that, when I go to load, it's going to recognize the names. So then the course ID, I just entered sequential numbers, and these are courses that we have in the Information Security and Intelligence Program at Fair State, and a description. And I left the professor ID blank. In a previous video, I mentioned that a lot of times when you're first creating a schedule for classes, you're not quite sure who's going to teach the classes. And so I'm, I'm leaving those blank so that I can populate the courses and then go back and add the professors a little bit later. Similarly, I have entered things for the uh, degree table called it a degree ID and a degree name. This is the one violation that I made, and it's to show you when we go to load it. Uh, I don't call it a degree ID in uh, SQL Server. I believe I call it a degree type. Uh, so I'm going to show you how that gets confused a little bit when you go to load it. And then on and on, you can see the various fields that we have. It's important, and these are the two bridge tables, uh, it's important that the data in the student ID matches students. So I have students 1 through 12 student IDs, and in the student course table, my student IDs are all between 1 and 12. Now I have student ID 1 taking course ID 1, and student ID 1 also taking course ID 2. Same thing, these course IDs need to match in the course table, and they go up to 13. If I go over to the course table, you can say I actually have 14 courses. So the student ID 1, remember they took course 1, which is database. They also took course 2, which is the Secure Digital Technologies class. But they must match. In other words, anything in the student ID has to be in the student table as a student ID, and same with the course ID. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get the related data. Similarly with the student major, again I have the students, and they're 1 through 12, and majors, and my majors it looks like it goes up to about eight different majors. So I can see that I do have eight majors. If I go back and look, I can see student 1 has a major of 1. And if I go to the major table, I can see that's information security and intelligence. So that's the data. Now what I like to do when I save the spreadsheet is I save it as an XLS rather than the XLSX. You can change the configurations a little bit to be able to load the XLSX spreadsheets, but uh, it's just as easy to use XLS and uh, load without having to modify anything in SQL Server. So 
with that, I will now go over to SQL Server and we'll do the import. Here are my, my tables. And you see they have the same names as the tabs for the worksheets. And all I need to do is a right click, tasks, import data. The first time I do this with SQL Server, I'm going to have this little pop-up window show up that basically tells you using the wizard. You're probably going to want to not see that again because it doesn't really help you. And then you need a data source. The source is where your data is coming from. Or remember, we're using Microsoft Excel. So we choose Excel. And then we have to browse out to where that Excel spreadsheet is. And on my desktop, let's go back to Excel and see where I saved it. Do a file. Save as, call it student database. It's in documents, FSU, ISIN 325. And again, see it's the XLS format. So documents, FSU, ISIN 325. Documents, FSU, ISIN 325, there it is. Now it also says the first row has column names. That is checked. Remember, in row one of my spreadsheet, I had the column names. Major ID, major name, etc. So I go next. Now I'm going to go into SQL Server. There's several different uh, ways you can come in. SQL Server, native client, OLADP, et cetera. Uh, we'll just choose the bottom one. We're going to use Windows authentication, so I don't have to fill things in. If I use SQL Server, I would have to populate uh, these fields. But I'm using Windows authentication. Students is the name of the database. I'm going to copy the data from one or more tables. And you can see here are all of those worksheets that I created in uh, Excel. Now note the dollar sign. The dollar sign is actually uh, not 100% of what we want. We want to choose the drop down and actually get the course table, choose the drop down and get the degree table. That dollar sign, if we left it, it would actually create a new table called, you know, major dollar sign instead of use the tables we already have created. Okay, so now we can go through each of these tables and we do the edit mappings and you can see in the source, all the names match in the destination because the source, this is what it was called in, in Excel, this is what it's called in SQL Server. We're going to append the rows. If there was any data in there, uh, it just adds it on to it. If we wanted to delete the rows, if there was some data in the tables, uh, and then start from fresh, uh, we would do that. Uh, but we'll, we'll just use the append option. It doesn't really matter because there's nothing in uh, most of the tables, although I think earlier I might have put one row into the, the courses table. So we'll just do a delete. So that one's good. The degree, edit the mappings. See how, remember I, I said it was degree ID when we were talking about Excel. Uh, it's actually got to go to the degree type. So even though the names are different, you can make them uh, go into the correct one. Edit mappings on the major. Looks good. Uh, you can do the preview and you can see what the data looks like for each of those tables as well. My professor, 
edit mappings looks good in the student uh, table when I created the student table the student ID in a previous video uh, I created that as an identity and we are actually going to be inserting the numbers that we supplied in Excel which was the one through 13 or 14 or so uh, if I did not uh, supply that, um, then it would automatically generate the numbers. But to do that, I would need to enable identity, insert. But just to generate the error, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm, I'll show you what the error message looks like. So if you ever hit it, you know what it'll, it'll be like. These look good. Student major, edit mappings. Looks good. Okay. So the reality is what should happen is everything should be able to load except for the student table. Uh, we'll have a problem because we had that identity setting. And you can just take the defaults and, and let them go. And you see you have this error message and you can click on it. And it'll tell you uh, truncation, course name was a little bit long, uh, and the length of the course name was only 30. Uh, course description was too long. So we had some truncation issues because our data is longer than the field allows, but let's uh, let's work through this a little bit. And here you can see the student ID issue starting to pop up. Uh, so there's a couple of ways you can work through it. You can just go backwards. And we could go to that, for example, that student table, go back one more. Edit mappings. And we could enable there. Um, I think it was the course name they said it was too long. So if we click on course and do a preview, okay, I lost the connection to Excel. So let's. Uh, Let's just cancel out and go back through the process. Let's just double check. We've got a major name and a major description. Um, the courses names don't look all that long. If we go into SQL Server, so for the course, right click design. The names were 30 and 50. Those are pretty long. We, we weren't that big. Similarly with the major, that looks fine. So let's just try it again and see what happens with um, the identity. And I'll show you since we're here, student design, student ID, if I go down a little ways, identity specification, remember, it says, yes, it's an identity. It's going to start with one and increment by one. So I'm going to start again with the import process that we just went through. To start the import, again, it was a right click on the student database, tasks, import data. Excel data. Oops. 
click SQL Server. Native client. You can also load one table at a time. Sometimes if you have difficulty, it's good just to load one at a time so that uh, uh, you can concentrate just on the problematic areas. Before we finish the import, there's a couple of things we got to remember to go back and do. We edit the mappings on the course table. Remember, we want to delete the existing record that we had typed in when we created the table uh, in the degree table. Uh, again, if you want to delete existing rows, you just do that. If there are no rows, it won't delete anything. Uh, but in this particular table, remember, we had a typo in the name of the key field. And the other one was the student table. Um, we have to enable the identity insert. And again, append would add, if you already have data in there, delete. If there's any data in the table, it will delete it. Uh, and then insert after everything is deleted. If there's nothing in there, either one works basically the same. So. We let that go and finish. And you can see all of our rows of data were put into the tables. So we can close out of here. If we want to see what this looks like, we could do a right click on course, uh, edit top 200, and we can see the data is loaded. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can bring up a query and we can simply type select star from the name of the table. So let's go with student and we can run that and you can see our data there. So life is good. We've got our database defined, our tables defined. We created our data in Excel and we imported it and we have a complete database we're now ready to start doing other things with.